welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason and this is a daily hypnosis session. And I want to talk about fear, fear, fear. And you can close your eyes if it's safe for you to do so, just get in touch with how you physically feel. Notice the body sensations. Remember that you can open your eyes at any time that you choose because you are the boss of yourself. I will give you suggestions. Those suggestions will go into your unconscious mind and although your unconscious mind is out of your conscious control. Your unconscious mind will never accept anything but positive suggestions from me. And I would never give any suggestions that weren't positive. Um, and you can watch any of my videos and you can see that for any of them. Over 400. 430 I think. So. Um, Fear. What does fear mean to you? Why have it? How does it help? It doesn't help, does it? I guess that's the answer. So, some people would say, well, having a fear of falling keeps you safe, keeps you away from the cliff edge. Well, having a brain that works can keep you away from the cliff edge. If your brain works, you know that it's dangerous to mess around on the cliff edge. Unless, of course, you've got all the equipment. You don't need fear for that. Fear is not helpful. Fear is what may make you fall when actually you wouldn't have fallen before. Because fear can confuse the brain. Especially nowadays where there's fears for things that I guess our ancestors would have found quite funny. You know, if we go back to prehistoric days, I guess the fear would have been from dinosaurs and, you know, lions and things that wanted to eat us. And there was a fear there. And that's, I guess, quite a natural fear to have. To have a degree, you know, of respect for, you know, those creatures that are stronger, especially dinosaurs. Not that you get many weak lions, but you know. <laughs> so, but to have fears of things that can't hurt you, what is the point in that? I know it's not a rational thing, but maybe looking at things rationally can make a change. Because some of these things a lot of fears are actually learnt um, either by a an adult when you're a child you, maybe you see uh, you know an adult, a, a parent screaming when they see a little spider so you're there, you're three years old you learn to scream when you see a spider you associate with the parent and therefore, you get scared when you see that spider. This little spider can't hurt you. It depends, obviously, where you live in the world. In the UK, we don't have any spiders that can hurt. Only the silly people that have tarantulas, and they keep them as pets. But, well, that's a judgment, isn't it? Silly people. Why would you have dangerous, introduce dangerous spiders into a place where there are none? There's no logic in that. <laughs> 
So, if you know something can hurt you, then you keep away from it. You don't have to be scared of it. If it's not a threat, no fear is needed. So to be scared of something, like a bird, for example, some people have fears of birds. That's not needed. How is that going to protect your life? How is that necessary or helpful at all? And it's not even real. It's not real, it's a bunch of emotions. It's a trigger, that's all that is. It's a trigger, but it's the wrong trigger. It's just wiring in the mind, in the brain. And that can be cut. That can be switched off. You know, if you take the batteries out, it won't work anymore. No matter what you do, you can press the buzzer as much as you want, it won't work. If you've got an alarm on your door, on your front door, an alarm, if you cut the, cut the wire, you can press that alarm, which used to cause a buzzer sound, or a ding-a-ling sound, or whatever. You take the wire off, or take, cut the wire, press that button all day long, nothing happens. There's no response to things that are unhelpful anymore. And there's something about the idea that you can easily change the way you feel about things like that. Whatever it is that you're fearful for, you can let it go. It's not helpful. Why would you hold on to that stuff? It's useless. It's pointless. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of your time. It's unhelpful. It's harmful to you. And it's silly. It's silly. You know it's silly. To be scared of something that can't hurt you. To have fear. And fear is the one thing that I know everybody seems to have fear of something so the idea of being scared for example if someone that lives in England is scared of crocodiles that's a silly fear for someone in this country to have because there are no crocodiles in this country other than in zoos so for that person to see a crocodile on the television or a picture of a crocodile to get fearful and to get anxious it's like there's no point it's a complete waste of time it's a useless reaction it's like feeling hungry every time you saw a car you know needing to eat jam every time you wore a particular t-shirt it's a connection that's pointless why would you want that you'd overcome that quite quickly I'm sure you'd change the way you felt wouldn't you If every time you had a date coming up, a first date, and you felt you had to eat garlic before you went out, after a while you'd learn not to eat garlic before a first date. And that brain would change. The wiring would change. We're constantly changing how we think and feel about certain things you know that's true you can change how you feel about something in an instant you know that if one of your friends did something a certain thing you know that you wouldn't be friends with them anymore instantly like that bang that'd be gone 
you would change the way you felt about them. So based on that, you know that you can let go of stuff. You know that you can change how you feel about fears. If you can change how you feel about people, if you can change how you feel instantly, it's really simple. It's really easy. Easier than maybe pretty much anything. Because it's instant. And those things that you used to be scared of in the past, you can laugh at it. Because you've got something. Maybe it's a fear of snakes, for example. And you know someone maybe that's scared of chickens or worms. Imagine someone that's scared of a worm. And you laugh at that person. You think how ridiculous it is. How can you be scared of a little worm that can't do anything to you, can't hurt you, it doesn't even move hardly? So imagine that thinking and aim it at yourself, aim it at you. How does that change how you feel about the thing that you used to be scared of in the past? How does that change when you just quickly turn it? Aim that spotlight of ridicule on yourself. On that particular thing. That used to be the cause of fear. I need to correct myself because it was never the cause of fear. You are the cause of that fear. That thing's not the cause. That nothing can make you feel anything. No person can make you feel anything. It's your response to that stimulus. So that snail or that worm or that spider or that snake, that's not responsible for your fear. You are responsible for your fear. You're the person that guards that fear. You're the person that holds on to it, that used to hold on to it. Which means that you are the person that can also let go of that fear. Let go and let it fly away. And you've got enough to think about in your life. And you've got more important things to give your energy to. Aren't you an adult? Why would you hold on to something that you held that you had when you were a child? Do you still play with the same toys that you played with when you were a child? Have you still got a little rattle? Have you still got a little doll? Action man? Do you still push your little pram around that you did when you was a little girl or a little boy? No, you don't do that stuff anymore. Because you're an adult. That stuff is for children. It's gone. So why would you hold on to something else that's also for children and a child's mind? It's child's thinking. It's not adult thinking. So when you realise that and you understand and accept you're an adult now. You don't need to have that stuff anymore. You've grown out of it. Chuck it away with the toys. And how does that change how you feel? Knowing that it's gone. Unnecessary, unhelpful. Gone. And you can live your life in a way that you choose to live your life. You can be the one that decides how you feel when you realise that nothing and no one 
can cause you to feel anything. All it is is a stimulus. You're the one that decides how you respond to those stimuluses or stimuli. You are the one that decides. And it's like someone's given you the remote control to the television when all the time you thought that you had no control over what was on you just had one channel and you watched it didn't realize there was 40 or 50 channels didn't realize that you had a remote control where you could watch whatever channel you choose to watch so you're no longer a victim of circumstance you're no longer stuck in the old thinking of a small child. You're an adult with creative, original thought, with the ability to make your own decisions about how you feel. You don't need to copy other people. You know? You have your own choices. You have your own mind. And that mind really can change when you choose to change it. Instantly and quickly. It doesn't take time. These things can happen in an instant. Right now. Just by making that decision to be the person that you want to be, not the person that other people expect you to behave in a way that you used to behave, but now the behavior's changed because you've decided to change that behavior. The same way at one point you might have gone to the toilet in a little potty, and then you decided you wanted to go to the toilet on a normal toilet like adults like big like a big boy or a little big girl or whatever you called yourself back then there was a time when maybe you used to eat with plastic knives and forks or with a plastic spoon and there's a time when you decided you wanted to use metal knives and forks you didn't want to eat off a plastic plate you wanted to eat off a normal plate And those quite often are your decisions because you know that you want to change and you don't want to be the, the little child that you were. And there's nothing wrong with being a little child. We've all got childish tendencies. But it's deciding which parts of that you wish to have inside you. Do you want to have the tendencies that are just ridiculous and hurting you why would you want that let it go with the rest of the stuff that you don't do anymore there's so much behavior that you don't do that you used to and back then when you used to you probably thought that you'd be doing it forever but you were wrong and that's okay because you learn that things constantly change. And what you do now and how you feel now isn't necessarily going to be how you're going to feel in five years time. You might look back and think, I can't believe I was doing that. I know I do. This gives you an opportunity to really look inside and find what you don't want anymore this can be like rubbish or garbage day get that stuff put it into a rubbish bin or into a rubbish bag a garbage bag and put it out for the collectors to collect it you don't need that stuff anymore. 
is not helpful anymore. Haven't you got enough to deal with? Why would you want extra stuff? Extra stuff that is poisoning your system, poisoning your mind, limiting your life. If someone else is trying to limit your life, wouldn't you do something about it? So why don't you do something about yourself limiting your life? Let it go. Let it go now. It's not helpful. Those fears are useless, unhelpful and harmful. Let it go. The same way you wouldn't eat food that was off. You wouldn't eat chicken that was mouldy. You wouldn't say, oh that's okay, we'll cook that anyway. Apart from the fact you might end up seriously ill, probably would. But you wouldn't do it. You wouldn't wait to the point of being hospitalised to realise that it was perhaps not a very good idea. You wouldn't do it in the first place. So why would you allow something like fear, which causes your system and your mind to be harmed? Causes the limitation on your own thinking and your own life. Perhaps it's time to put that into the bin. Time is everything. And it's your choice how you spend your time. And do you choose to spend your time being fearful about something that you don't need to be? Or do you choose to let that go? Do you choose to enjoy your life? To no longer be controlled by something that can't control you. I know it sounds ridiculous. The idea of being controlled by something that can't control you. But that's what phobias and fears are. They can't control you. But you let them. You give energy. To something. It's like going into a shop, drinking eight cans of lager, and then blaming the shopkeeper for you being drunk. It's the person that sold me the alcohol, that's the reason I'm drunk. No. If you had a car accident, would you blame the person that sold you the car, providing the car was okay? You wouldn't. There's lots of other versions of the same thing, which you can probably think of yourself. If you got a takeaway pizza delivered and you dropped it on the floor. Would you blame the pizza delivery person? And you couldn't get the stain out of the carpet. Would you blame the people that put the carpet? The people that made the carpet? Is it their fault that you dropped the pizza? I don't know, it's ridiculous. So many things are ridiculous. 
like being scared of something for no reason. And some people might say, well I do have a reason because this happened at this time and it happened. Can't change that it happened. But are you really going to allow yourself to let that thing affect you forever? Don't you care enough for yourself to just let it go? Doesn't mean you have to forget what happened. Doesn't mean that it's okay that it happened. Doesn't mean that you, you know, won't benefit from being wary and aware of certain situations. But doesn't mean that you can't just let go of the actual feelings. Let go of the actual fear. And don't allow something to control you that actually can't control you. Isn't that the bottom line? Don't allow something to control you that can't control you. And I wonder how you feel about that, about the idea that you really can let go of fears and phobias because they're useless, they have no consequence, they mean nothing. All it is is you reacting to a stimulus that you've given permission to allow yourself to react in that way when you could just take the batteries out or cut the wires and it will not work anymore it will be finished it will be ended and you can smile and you can enjoy your life without limitations that you have set for yourself which gives you back the responsibility and at the same time empowering you it's not about blame it's not about criticizing it's no one's fault it's about caring for yourself it's about loving yourself. It's about taking control of the situation so that you really can enjoy your life more by letting go of these limiting self beliefs that are not helpful and can change in an instant. These fears can be dissolved like hot water on ice cubes. Watch them melt and dissolve. No longer cold, no longer ice cubes but just water. Remembering that these fears do not have any substance. They're not concrete. They're not fixed. They are fluid and they can be dissolved in an instant with your permission. So this brings us to the end of this hypnosis session. I wish you well. I wish you happiness and I hope that you can live your life with more, more 
choices, less self-limiting things. And remember, you decide how you feel, no one else, and nothing else.